Welcome to the Gaming Codex, the show where I try to explain to you everything in the video games industry and we are going to be here for quite a while because it is a very big industry with lots of terms that need to be defined. And today's term is the tycoon. And what exactly would be a tycoon game? Well, according to the general definition, business simulation games, also known as economic simulation games or tycoon games, are games that focus on the management of economic processes, usually in the form of a business. That's the broad sense of the tycoon as a economical simulation game. But I'm sort of willing to take this a tiny bit of a step further and define it a bit more. I wouldn't call a game like Capitalism a tycoon. Capitalism is an absolutely excellent economical simulator, but I can say it fits precisely the vision of a tycoon game because unlike a tycoon game, this does not limit you to one single type of business. A tycoon is a kind of game where you have to build from the ground up a business of a certain type. The first one, one of the first tycoon games ever made, the one that actually had tycoon in the name, actually I believe it was the first one, was Sid Meier's Railroad Tycoon, which put you in charge of your own railway company that you had to build from the ground up and manage it. But this game wasn't really what truly defined uh, tycoons. I dare say that not even Dino Park Tycoon, which according to Wikipedia was the second game to have the tycoon name, was what truly defined this species of video games. It was a combination of titles such as Pizza Tycoon, Theme Park and of course Transport Tycoon. Yes, and now Theme Park doesn't have Tycoon in the name, but it is in the same vein. It's an economical simulator in which you, as a player, have to manage basically every detail of one particular business, and the game goes really in depth with that business, with its stylings, with its appearance, with but with everything attached to it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be true to life. Yes. Transport Tycoon is true to life until you start putting trees in front of the enemy's airports and see their planes crash. I think they, uh, they'd they reroute the airplanes or cut down the trees, but they don't. Also, that game has a railroad system that lets you build processors, which is not something you would see in an economical simulator, and that's the basic idea. Apart from the economical simulation of it, you have the other side, you have the enjoyment of the theme, you have the enjoyment of building something and seeing it work, you have the enjoyment of customizing something, you have the enjoyment of the underlying mechanics that are not necessarily completely dependent upon the economy. That's what sets a tycoon apart from just an economical simulator game. There is no economical incentive in Roller Coaster Tycoon to murder everyone in your park by drowning them in water or by building a roller coaster that somehow either explodes or um, accidentally terminates the same level at a very crowded alley and murders everyone. But it's part of the game, it's part of what makes Roller Coaster Tycoon what it is. Yes, I know, it may not be one of the greatest distinctions ever made, it's blurry, it's downright subjective at times, but you can sort of feel it. Now, what would be the popular definition of a tycoon game? Well, let's say that that would be a game where you earn money by clicking on things in order to make more money, to click on more things, to get even more money, to etc. The tycoon game has sort of transformed a bit thanks to the... Uh, well, I would say the mobile age of gaming, but that's not actually true, is it? Mobile games didn't start this, they inherited this from very, very horrible developers who bastardized themes, bastardized ideas and made them horrible and yet still blanketed them in the appeal of the original. I am talking of course about Farmville and Cityville and all its ilks, games that fundamentally did not have any actual gameplay. You just clicked on the things that the game told you to click on when you could click on them because there was a time unless you paid up so that you could then build more things you could click on and never be challenged, never have any sort of objective, 
I mean a real one, not collect 50 cows or something. And never actually being able to completely express yourself through its mechanics. Yeah, you could draw a penis in your farm, but what else could you do? You couldn't. You couldn't make your cows dance or something. No, you, you couldn't do anything. And sadly, that became the blueprint for every... Well, not every, but... No, wait, yeah, kind of every mobile tycoon game, mobile business simulator ever made. And even a bunch that were ported to PC, or that were made specifically for the PC, that still had some ideas that were more akin to a classic tycoon, a more classic business simulator, but you can see that they were built first and foremost on the blueprint of Farmville, and they were horrible. Thankfully, and even though it is kind of seven years too late, mobile games are coming around, and even absolutely wretched companies like Atari have released mobile ports, completely functional ones, of Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and 2 in the same package instead of their mobile Roller Coaster Tycoon game, which was an atrocious piece of absolute filth. Not worthy of the name, not worthy of being called a tycoon because it wasn't, it was a clicker. An absolute goddamn sham. And sadly, this is what people now see as a tycoon game. Yeah, I get it. Y you may find it a bit relaxing to click on the stuff. Oh look, I made money. Oh look, I clicked on this, I made money. But it, the game has no lasting appeal. It has no drive to it. No soul. No ability to drown people that complain that your park smells by throwing them into the lake. Now, what is the marketing definition of a tycoon? Well, that's something that big publishers can sell for unknown reasons. Name one tycoon game made by a big publisher in the last couple of years. The only one that even comes close is Planet Coaster, which is made not by a big publisher, it's made by Frontier and they're publishing it. And it's a good game, it's a fantastic game. But Frontier isn't what you would call big. Oh sure, there is Atari, who made an atrocious new Roller Coaster Tycoon game because of the outrage over the mobile one. And it was horrible. And it couldn't sell it because it was horrible. Probably one of the last tycoon games published by a big company was Zoo Tycoon again made by Frontier for the Xbox four years ago. And it's not like this genre is dead, no, oh, of course not. It's it's getting title after title monthly, but most of them are small tiny games with some questionable levels of quality and design ideas, again taken from Farmville. You see them crop up on Steam again every month, some maybe nice, some no are not, they're kind of horrible, but they're still wanted, they're still being made, they're still being played because people want something like this. It's the same conundrum that we've had with the survival genre. Someone's gonna have to make a really, really good tycoon game. Someone with a big budget. Planet Coaster may not appeal to everyone because it's about roller coasters. So we're gonna need some games about more diverse topics. Are we gonna get them with the budget they need? No, unless Frontier makes more of them, or unless Paradox tries to make one. But don't expect a big company, like a really big company that would have the uh, budget and even the demographics, to actually do something about it. So closes the chapter on tycoons in the gaming codex. Come back next time for a more technical term. Goodbye.